now we'll wash the parts. I use a little Dawn dishwashing liquid, some cool water, a gentle scrub brush, give the parts a little scrub. Then I rinse the parts. Then I set them out to dry. Once you're finished washing the parts, set them on a soft towel and allow them to dry. Then you can move on to the next step. The kit gives you two different choices for engine options. One is the Hemi motor, the other is the Ford 302. And with the Ford 302, you can either build the carbureted 302 version or the fuel injected 5 liter Mustang motor. I'm choosing to build the 5 liter Mustang motor. I painted and detailed the engine and added ignition wires from Gopher Racing along with wire looms from the model car garage to hold them in place. Once I was satisfied with the part fitment, I used Tamiya's Fine Surface Primer and Light Gray to seal the parts for their top coat. Two light coats were applied. Once the primer dried and cured, I applied three light coats of Tamiya TS11 Maroon to the body and other body parts. I will let this cure for a minimum of five days before I move on to the next step. I added the exhaust, the transmission cross member, and the master cylinder, as well as the steering gearbox to the chassis. Assembled the tire and rim combination. I detailed the chrome rims with a panel line accent and I also applied the white wall decals to the tires. Be sure to pay special attention when assembling the tire and rim combination. The front tire rims are thinner and the tires are a little smaller. Your rear tires are a little thicker rim and a larger tire. These are the assembled examples. You can see the difference between the front and the rear tires. Putting on the I-beam front suspension was a little more tricky. The actual axle part went on fairly well. However, putting the shock mounts on proved to be a challenge. Make sure you have a good pair of tweezers and really good super glue. The rear suspension is a coilover design. Getting the rear shocks onto the differential, there are two little pins on the back of the differential housing where the shock attaches to up top, but underneath where the frame rails are, the shock mounts right next to the tab on the frame rail. Depending on which version you're building, whether it be the high boy or the coupe, make sure that you use the proper front steering components. For the high boy, you want to use numbers 563 and 564, along with part number 32. For the coupe, such as what I'm building, you're going to use parts number 29 and 30, along with number 32. Those will attach to the front uh, axle. And here they are attached to the front axle. Part number 32 will lay across the bottom of the steering knuckles on the wheels and the pitman arm will attach to the steering box that was attached earlier. The rear trailing arms are attached to the cross member on the frame and then to the rear differential. There's a notch on the rear differential that helps align them. Installing the engine into the chassis is a tight fit. You will have to 
gently pry the transmission tail shaft into the cross member. The headers will slip past the engine mounts and then once that happens everything will just fall into place. Don't forget your drive shaft. And voila! Fits into the chassis very nicely. Once the paint cured, I applied the decals, then I applied three coats of Tanya's TS13 clear gloss to protect the finish and give a good shine. To simulate carpeting in this vehicle, I will use 3M's Micropore tape. I applied it in sections over the flooring of the interior, and then I will spray paint a flat black paint over it. That should give us a perfect carpet texture. I will now apply Tamiya's TS6 matte black over the micropore tape. We'll let that dry and then we can continue with the interior assembly. XF59 Desert Yellow, mixed at a one-to-one -one ratio with X28 Thinner, and applied it to the interior pieces with my Posh Dual Action Airbrush. The interior parts are detailed and ready for assembly. The interior assembly is now complete. I attach the seat, the side panels, the dashboard, shifter, and steering wheel. For the wood grain look on the steering wheel and shifter knob, I use the interior color. I dry brushed a gloss brown and then final coated it with a turn signal amber to give it a warm wood look. I added the running boards to the chassis. Now the running boards must be installed first before installing any other body part. I installed the cab, I then installed the front and rear bumpers. A little difficult to put on, but with a little perseverance, they line up rather nicely. A good super glue will ensure a good bond. I installed the radiator, core support, and engine hoses next. The instructions say to install the radiator core first, and then install your hoses. My suggestion would be to install the bottom hose into the radiator core support, feed that into the bottom of the engine so that lines up. Then use this metal prop rod that holds the hood in place and then install your top hose. That will give you perfect alignment so that way your hood will fit on perfectly. I installed the rear tail lights the license plate, and the rear trunk lid. I installed the front headlights. These are probably the most difficult part of the build, putting these headlights onto a tiny little tab and putting the tiny little tab into a tiny little indent in the fender. Good luck! I used canopy glue to hold it in place. And there you have it. Ravel's 32 Ford 5 Window Coupe, complete.